He seemed excited and told me he would be in touch, but then he ghosted me. What's up and welcome back to my channel, the number one place for entrepreneurs and business owners. I know a lot of agents and business owners think that in order to win new clients, it's their job to go out into the world and convince every single one in the world to buy their product and services. Today, I'm going to attempt to make my case for why I think this is a losing strategy and what to do instead. I recently had a conversation with a student of mine who told me a story I think most of us can relate to. I met someone who seemed like the perfect candidate for my service. I invited him to a coffee and we talked about the problems he's having. I gave him lots of ideas for things we could fix them. He seemed excited and told me he would be in touch, but then he ghosted me. This happens a lot actually. How can I better convince people they will benefit from my services? First, they need to know they need your service. Most of the time, it's not you. It's just that it's still too early in their decision-making process. They are just not ready. They may not yet know that what you sell is what they need. You know they need it for sure, 100% absolutely positive. And you can't wait to roll your sleeves up and help them. But if they don't know they need it, they are not going to buy. I know how exciting it is to meet someone willing to let you pitch your services to them. But the reality is when you are looking for clients at a networking event or Facebook groups or any sort of events with the goal of getting them on a sales call with you and for you to convince them, many of those people aren't going to be far enough along in their decision-making process to be ready to take the next step. With this approach, you may be locked up and get a certain percentage of clients who are ready to move forward, but majority of them will be thankful you have given them a bunch of stuff to think about and then leave you hanging. In other words, expect some ghosting and some thanks but no thanks responses. The questions I have for you is, is this a good use of your time? How much time are you spending smoothing potential clients in calls and coffee dates and back and forth texting and leads to absolutely nowhere? Start keeping track, tell you all the times you have spent doing all these activities and find out what is actually costing you. It's usually a lot more than people realize. Then, Think about whether your time would be better spent creating evergreen one to many marketing assets. If you are still struggling at this phase, you do not know how to target one to many, you are still using the old traditional one to one methods that are absolutely slow, like cold calling, begging for reference, door to door knocking, then you're officially invited to my free live masterclass. In my 90 minutes masterclass, you're gonna learn the lead automation system or how to attract leads 24 seven on autopilot, as well as Facebook tips and tricks. The second tip is go through the customer journey. Sometimes people reach out to you and ask for a meeting when they are nowhere near ready to take the next steps. I call them the tire kickers. Tire kickers are not bad people. They don't mean to waste your precious time. It's just that they are in the information gathering stage of their journey and if you offer to get a free call so that they can pick your brain, they will definitely take up on it. The problem is you're making assumption they are in the decision or evaluation phase of their journey, which they must be in order to buy, but they are just not there yet. Every buyer goes through the customer journey. How long it takes from them to go from the awareness to the engagement stage varies, but there is no shortcutting it. When you are a solo professional especially, you want to be very careful when it comes to spending one-on-one -on -one time with your potential clients unless you know they are far enough along in that process. For the awareness and consideration phases, you want to take a one-to-many approach to let people in the world know what problems you solve, for whom, and the benefits of choosing you. This means sharing valuable content, being active on social media, and creating discoverable content. The idea is, rather than going out to get clients, you focus your energy on attracting the right people and prospect to you. When it comes time to take those next steps, you are the one to turn to. 
I talk more about the customer journey process in this video here. So be sure to check it out after watching this. I'll also put the link to that video in the description box down below. That brings me to my third point, the value ladder. I'm a huge proponent when it comes to creating a value ladder for your services because it relates naturally to your customer's decision-making process. Here is an example of what I mean. Your first two offers are for the people who are still in the awareness and consideration phases. Think of your initial offer as part of your marketing products and services. You are earning trust and educating them. These are not people who are ready to buy into your premium products and services, so you want to offer them something smaller instead. A free one-on-one -on -one consultant is the go-to first for most of the service providers and agents out there, but it's the one with the largest cost. You need to qualify people before you spend time with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. This is a key for solo service-based professional because you won't have the time to create your free and intro offers if you're wasting your precious time in sales call and meetings. When service providers complain about they never have time to market their business, it usually has a lot to do with having an inefficient sales process. Now, there are a couple of ways to qualify people. The most and obvious way is to ask them to fill out a questionnaire or application or just answer a couple of questions before scheduling the meeting. From the application process, you have the power to fire your prospects. If they are not a good fit, you should and must have all the power to pick and choose your prospect. You, it shouldn't be the other way around because you are the one who is trying to solve their problem. So why lower down yourself? It's much more effective to build your brand so when people are ready and they know that they need your help, they will come to you. It's much, much, much easier to sell something to someone who already knows that they have have a problem and based on all they have seen so far, you seem to be the best candidate to solve it. This is the art of client attraction. And bottom line is, it's just a more efficient way to sell things. I do hope that this post on how to sell on social media has been helpful. I do a lot of content about social media marketing strategies, so be sure to check out these two videos that I have for you as well. Again, I appreciate you and thanks for watching all the way. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!